Russell Westbrook after three. The day is finally here. The day is here. The day I've been waiting for. Ever since the Phoenix Suns started sucking. The day I've been waiting for. All those games I wanted the Phoenix Suns to lose. Not win. All those games I wanted the Phoenix Suns to lose. I've been waiting for today. Today's the NBA draft lottery. I mean, I'm hyped for today. If you're a fan of a sucky team, just like me, Today's our day. If you're a Laker fan, a 76ers fan, T-Wolves fan, fucking all, Milwaukee, Sacramento. If you're a fan of them, today's our day. And also, if you're a fan of Boston, Toronto, I'll get into that later. But anyways, today's a huge day in the NBA because unlike any other sport, the NBA does kind of like a little drawing, a little lottery to determine the draft order. And let me get into this a little. So what is the NBA draft lottery? So as you know, if you don't know, here it is. In football, the worst team gets the number one pick. The second worst team gets the second pick. Third worst gets the third pick and so on. So if you have the worst record, then you get rewarded with the, the best college player. In basketball, what's done is if you have the worst record, you don't get the number one pick. You get more ping pong balls out of a like a raffle so you have a higher chance of getting a number one pick, but it's not for sure. And if you're the second worst, then you have the second most ping pong ball combinations, but it's not for sure. So here's why they do that. In the NBA, it's frowned upon to lose on purpose, but a lot of teams do it. So rather than the NBA having this mentality of, okay, the, the team that loses the most games get the number one pick, they try to prevent teams from losing on purpose. They try to make the league more competitive by saying pretty much, Hey, even if you lose the most games, you don't get the number one pick for sure. Now, since you still have the highest odds at getting the number one pick, since you still have the most ping pong balls, if you're the worst team, that hasn't really worked in preventing teams from losing on purpose, or aka tanking, which is pretty much, like I said, losing on purpose. You lose on purpose to give yourself the most ping pong balls for exactly today, May 17th at 5 p.m., NBA draft lottery. So let me give you a little bit, uh, a little bit more information. So like I said, in football, if you got the worst record, you automatically get the number one pick. In basketball, if you get the worst record, you have the most ping pong balls, but it is not for sure. What happens is they draw a combination from all those ping pong balls, and Philadelphia, who had the worst record, has a 25% chance at getting the number one pick. The Lakers, who have the second worst record, have a 20% chance. The Brooklyn Nets, who traded their pick to the Boston Celtics, have the third worst record, so they have like a 15.6% chance. So, so yes, you have higher odds if you're worse, but you don't get it for sure. And as a matter of fact, the number one pick, I mean the worst record, rarely gets to draft number one. Um, in recent history, it's actually, like I said, rare. For the team with the worst record, despite having the 25% chance to draft number one, it's actually rare that it happens. Um, a couple years ago, Chicago moved all the way up to pick Derrick Rose. They had less than a 2% chance to move up, and they did. So uh, let me get into why I said this is a big day for Boston and Toronto fans, even though their teams don't suck. A couple years back, when Boston traded Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Jason Terry to Brooklyn, they got Brooklyn's pick for this year. That's right. Brooklyn does not have a first round pick. Boston gets the pick. Now, why is this such a big day for Boston fans? Because Brooklyn was the third worst team in the NBA, meaning they have the third best chance at getting the number one pick. Could you imagine Boston having made the playoffs, having won 48 games, and then sitting back watching Brooklyn lose all these games and getting the number one pick? If that, if I was Brooklyn's GM owner, I would be... Oh, oh my god. So Boston does have Brooklyn's pick. So in the draft lottery, when you see Brooklyn having the third best odds, a 15.6% chance to draft number one, that's Boston's. Now let me explain what happened with Toronto and New York and Denver. This might be a little confusing, but bear with me. The New York Knicks do not have a first round pick. Denver has New York's first round pick. So New York missed the playoffs. They were really bad this year and they have to give their pick to Denver. Denver then gives their pick to Toronto. So Toronto has Denver's pick. 
Denver has New York's pick and New York does not have a pick. So ex- let me explain that one last time. Denver gets the Knicks pick. Denver then gives their original pick to Toronto and the New York Knicks are left without a first round pick. A- another trade. Los Angeles Lakers. You and your fans need to be holding your breath and crossing your fingers because if the Lakers fall out of the top three, they don't get a pick. They don't get a pick in this year's draft. A first round pick, I should say. So what happened with the Lakers is they had the second worst record in the whole NBA. They went through a miserable, terrible season. And they could end up not even drafting because, because, because when they traded for Steve Nash from the Phoenix Suns back in 2012... They gave the Suns this year's first round pick. They gave the Phoenix Suns this year's first round pick top three protected. Meaning, if the Lakers get a top three pick, I don't know how the hell they would know that they were going to be this close to top three. They keep it. If it goes anywhere from four and below, the Suns would get it. But, but, bear with me. Let me tell you why Philadelphia then gets that pick. Because the Phoenix Suns traded that pick. So they got it from the Lakers. And then they traded it for... (laughs) Traded it for Brandon Knight. Hold on. I'm actually about to cry. Look. They traded the fucking Lakers. Top three protected first round pick for Brandon. Mm -mm. Why Phoenix? Look, I'm literally crying. So Lakers and Laker fans, you need to be holding your breath. because, And Philly fans, you need to be crossing your fingers. Because Philly, if the Lakers fall out of the top three... You guys would have two top five picks. Two. So, Philly fans are rooting for the Lakers to fall out of the top three. Laker fans are praying that they stay in the top three. And uh, I don't want to say the lottery is rigged, but let's just say that the Lakers have been bad the past few years. And the NBA makes a little more money when the Lakers are good. Just a little side note. So, let's keep that in mind. I don't think the Lakers will lose their pick. But if they do, LA, LA, I looked like two hours from LA. LA is going to be crazy. They're going to be going crazy. Last trade, Phoenix Suns have Washington Wizards pick uh, for trading Markeith Morris. That's most likely going to be the 13th pick. So, all in all, to run this through, the NBA is going to draft uh, ping pong balls. And they're going to put those ping pong balls in like some type of combination. If you have the worst record, a.k.a. Philadelphia, you have the most combinations. So, the higher chance of draft number one. But, if you're looking at history, that didn't always work out. So just because your team was the second worst, the Lakers, or the third worst, Boston, don't be bummed out because you have a chance at getting the number one pick. And um, Phoenix also with the fourth worst record, which is obviously my team if you can't tell. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the Phoenix Suns move up to number one or even number two because let me tell you a little something about this draft. This draft is weird. Outside of the top two, top two, so you got Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. Those are supposedly the t- top two picks. Ben Simmons from LSU, Brandon Ingram from Duke. There is a huge, and I repeat myself, huge, like the size of my shoe, huge drop off between number two and number three. I mean, it, it's it's like this is what they're saying. Top two pick, you get a franchise changing superstar who's going to be the best player on your team for the next five to ten years. One drop next, the number three pick. Oh, yeah, number three is, yeah, whatever. So teams are, like, even if they don't get the number one pick, they're dying to get that number two pick because, like I said, this draft is different than most. You have the top two, and then outside of the top two, everyone else is pretty, like, let's just say they wouldn't be picking, being picked this high in any other drafts. So me being a Suns fan, I'm hoping and hoping and hoping and praying I watched every single game this past year. Every minute of every game. I watched the Suns lose 59 times. I watched them Bledsoe get injured. I watched Brandon Knight putting up miserable shots, playing no defense at all. I watched Tyson Chandler average like five or six points a game. I went through this miserable season. Please, basketball gods. Please. Please. I'm not even asking for number one. If you give me number one, thank you. But just the top two. Even I'll be fine with number two. Please. God forbid we move down from four. There's always a chance that my team goes to five or six. God forbid that happens. But, and and yes, if you want to hear my opinion, if the Suns don't pick within the top two, I want to trade the pick. I don't think any player three, four, five is is 
worthy of getting picked that high. I say trade it for either an established player or a future pick in next year's draft or something. But, um, yeah, so like I said, if your team missed the playoffs with the exception of Boston or Toronto, today's our day. Today's our day. We're going to be watching the draft lottery in a few hours. Like I said, drawing random ping pong balls and then picking the order of the draft. Laker fans, you better hope you get into the top three. Philly fans, you're praying that the Lakers don't. <sighs> Who know? I don't know, guys. I'm hoping Phoenix, they have an 11.9% chance. So like a 12% chance at the number one pick. 12%. You know, you know how you write 12, 1, 2, you know, 1 for Devin Booker, 2 for Eric Bledsoe, 12, put those together, give me luck, please, please, I'm begging, I'm begging, anyways, Brawadis is out, and this might be like the most nerve-wracking day of my life, like when I'm watching it, I'm telling you, this is franchise changing for the team, so I'm gonna be so nervous, I'll probably hop on Periscope, Snapchat, I don't know, and I'll probably record my reaction, upload that tomorrow, but anyways, Draft lottery coming up. It's only like a 30-minute segment right before the Cavs and Raptors game. And um, best of luck to whoever your team is. Wish me luck for the Suns. And ah, one last little side note. It's been 30 years. 30 years since the Phoenix Suns moved up in the draft lottery. 30 years. 1987 was the last time they moved up. How about we make it NBA, NBA, hear me out. How about we make it once every 30 years the Phoenix Suns move up? So after tonight, if they get the number one, number two pick, we don't have to move them up until 2046. Please, the Suns deserve it. I watched their games. They were garbage. They were ass. They were injured. They were sucky. They had attitude problems. Please, Phoenix. Please, NBA. Give the Suns a number one, number two pick. Please. Okay, here's a little preview of how it would go. Let's see. Play lottery, simulating the results, and, okay, of course, the Lakers. So the Lakers would win the number one pick. The Pelicans would move up to two. Philly would move down to three. The Suns would move down one spot to five. Let's play it again one more time. Okay, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so right here, the Suns move up to number two. Philly moves down to four. Lakers move down to three, and the... The Minnesota Timberwolves, who only had an 8% chance to win, would draft number one. Let's play one more time. Oh. Oh, wow. The Suns. Okay, so here the Lakers would lose their pick because it fell outside of the top three. Philly would get two top five picks. Uh, the Bucks, who only had less than a 2% chance to win, would win. And, I mean, you see what I mean, guys? It's all, like, it's all luck. It's all luck and... We'll see what happens, honestly.